Support for The Hub is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technological developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide, and I got an exclusive offer for you guys. 20% off plus free shipping with the code HUB, H-U-B. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code HUB, H-U-B, at Manscaped.com. So a big trade just happened, y'all. The Philadelphia Eagles have officially agreed to trade Carson Wentz to the Indianapolis Colts in exchange for a 2021 third round pick and a conditional 2022 second round pick that could turn into a first if Wentz plays 75% of, you know, his starting snaps. You know, if he plays 75% or more, that becomes a first round pick. But here's the thing. This is a trade that a lot of people saw coming for a long time. Now, a lot of people had in their head that the Eagles were going to trade Carson Wentz at some point during this season after they just straight up benched the guy, after like he was having such a bad season, which, you know, a lot of it is his fault. A lot of it is the team's fault. A lot of it is the coaching staff's fault. There's a lot of blame to go around, but Wentz 100% is not the same player he was back in 2017, 2018. Funnily enough, in 2017, when he had Frank Reich as his offensive coordinator in that MVP-like season that he had, who was now the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. But ever since, you know, he was just, it was clear that he was going to have a terrible year and the Eagles just sort of gave up on him. Speculation started going around whether or not they were going to trade him, which is crazy because they already gave him that super huge extension. You know, this was a guy they traded up for. They gave up two first round picks back in the 2016 draft to trade up and get him. And at first it looked like it worked out. And obviously when you end up trading the guy before his rookie deal is even up, it's clear that it did not work out, right? So, I mean, that's what's crazy about it. And then since week 17, one of the teams that was most popular to speculate about that Wentz might go to, he might get traded to, was the Colts because of the Frank Reich connection and because the Colts are really still just a QB away. They have a great team over there, great defense, good enough offense, definitely a way better offensive line than what the Eagles had and Wentz is going to be staying upright a lot more this year and he has a bit more should I say consistent receiving weapons? I'll tell you guys this. Wentz in the Colts is definitely going to be better than Wentz that you saw in 2020 here with the Eagles. I'm not saying he's going to be better than 2017 Wentz because like we still don't even know if he could replicate that. We still don't know if that was like an outlier season, but he's going to be a really good quarterback. And I think he's going to be better than Phillip Rivers was with the Colts in 2020. In my opinion, the Colts got better, right? Let, let's just say what it is. The Colts got better. The Colts are still a contender after going through three quarterbacks in like the past three years, unfortunately. Um, everybody would love if they still had Andrew Luck. The Colts would still love if they have Andrew Luck. But you got a, you got a guy now that, that's legit. You, you got a legitimate quarterback. You don't know how long you got him for because I think the Eagles are still eating dead cap, at least for the first year. I think they're still going to eat like 30 million in dead cap. And this is a team that's already negative 60 million in dead cap, which was going to be my original video today talking about how the NFL has confirmed that the minimum cap space this offseason is raised from 175 million to 185 mil to 180 million I should say so they get a 5 million dollar bump um and even then it doesn't really help out the Eagles this much in terms of how this affects the Giants uh, well, I guess I'll address the cap space thing first. We're still pretty bad right now when it comes to available money, but we haven't cut anybody yet. We haven't restructured any contracts yet. So I'm not too worried, but we're still like, I think $2 million, you know, available just a little bit over or just a little bit under $2 million available. Um, with the, the Eagles trade and the Carson Wentz thing, I think that helps us out a lot more than what the NFL did today with the cap space because now the Eagles are really looking for a quarterback and there's a chance that they could take a QB at six. I'm not saying they will. Maybe they're going to roll with Jalen Hurts for another year, see what he has. Maybe they're going to try and get somebody in free agency, you know, a, a journeyman type quarterback. But I am saying now there's a legitimate chance that the Eagles who are in a prime position at six, they could 100% take a quarterback there. That means, of course, there's more of a chance for one of these top three wide receivers to drop to the Giants. One of the most popular spots for the first wide receiver to go off the board, you know, in 
The entire draft process so far has been Philadelphia at six. Sometimes in a little bit more crazier drafts where it's like they really think the Dolphins want one, it's at three to the Dolphins. But most of the time, the most consistent spot you see one of these wide receivers going first, and it's usually Jamar Chase, is to the Eagles. Now I can 100% see them taking a quarterback, and that of course affects the entirety of the rest of the draft. Everybody behind them. It, it certainly affects who the Panthers take. Definitely affects who Detroit takes. You know what I'm saying? Who Dallas takes. All of that. It just means that there's just a little bit more of a chance that one of these top three guys drops to the Giants and then with them eating even more you know cap space they go from basically negative 60 million dollars in cap space to down like negative 90 million dollars in cap space how does that help out the Giants in obvious ways the worst position that the Eagles are in it's a better position for the Giants it's your division rival if you could get them into as much negative cap space as possible it's only gonna help us it's gonna help every other nfc east team and they were already one of the worst teams with cap space available and now it's even worse oh my god how can you be negative 90 million dollars in cap space they're gonna have to cut like their entire roster think about that for a second guys they're gonna have to cut basically every single player that they have especially on defense because it's not like they have that many big contracts on the offensive side of the ball but all of their defensive pieces are probably going to be gone. And if the Giants could, you know, snag up one or two of those guys on a cheap deal, on a cheap contract, because they're going to be looking for work, why not? I mean, I'm not completely against it. I'm not against it at all. I'm not against, say, if we get, I don't know, like a cornerback two from the Eagles. I'm not against it at all. I definitely want to avoid their linebackers. I know we need a linebacker too, but Philadelphia in the past 10, 15 years have been a terrible linebacker team. So I, I really don't want that. I mean, our defensive line is pretty good. So I don't want Fletcher Cox. And Fletcher Cox wouldn't even want to come to New York anyway. He hates New York. New York hates him. It, it is what it is. It's the Eagle Giants rivalry thing. Um, What else? Uh, safeties, we're good at safety. I mean, so we're pretty good there. On the offensive side of the ball, maybe if they cut Travis Fulgham, who was like their, you know, their flash in the pan, their wide receiver that had a good time during the regular season for like a couple weeks, maybe if they cut him, the Giants pick him up on a short deal or something, I wouldn't mind. Uh, whatever the case is, this only helps out the Giants, in my opinion. And, and going back to the Colts real quick, like I said, the Colts got better, and the Eagles should definitely be, be considering QB in my opinion, but the Colts got better. The Colts stay a contender, which is so surprising because this is a team that lost their quarterback in Andrew Luck. They went out, they got Phillip Rivers. Phillip Rivers played for them for one year, got them to the wild card round. Then Rivers retires. Um, obviously, they're hoping that Carson Wentz could be there more than one year. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, they're hoping that he could take them not only to the wild card round, but beyond that, we'll see how it goes. But the Colts are a legitimate contender still. And that's pretty cool to me. But put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think about the trade. Let me know what you think about the cap space. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't really speak too much on the cap space. But I, the reason I didn't is because I really don't think it affects us that much. It's just like $5 million extra. And, and that is a lot. I'll say that. That is a lot. But until we start cutting players, until we start restructuring contracts, there's not really much for me to say on the cap space. Because nothing major is going to change until those moves are made. But put, put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. And I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.